We're going to try something here with a deck of playing cards. I have here a uh, completely uh, randomized deck of playing cards. This is a 52 card pack, so there are no jokers in here. Uh, there are only the uh, 52 uh, face and number cards. And you can see that there is no sequence uh, to be had anywhere in this pack. Everything is completely uh, out of order. There's no uh, kind of order to it. There's uh, 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 no suits that are put together. Uh, just to be certain, we'll, we'll take this uh, pack, and again, it could be you know, a completely borrowed deck of cards. We'll just give it a quick a shuffle just to be certain and then what I'm gonna have uh, uh, have you do we'll have a couple of you select uh, randomly a few cards out of the deck so uh, you over here let's see if we could have you uh, just tell me when to stop I'm gonna riffle through the pack you tell me when to stop right there okay and if you uh, want I can keep going it's fine that's that's fine for you okay we'll take that card and uh, over here uh, uh, you miss let's see if we can uh, find another spot I'll riffle through you tell me when to stop Right there? Okay, very good. And we'll take that card. Uh, so we're left with a couple of uh, freely selected cards here. We have the Ace of Spades. That's interesting. That is uh, one of the most well-known uh, cards in, in a deck of cards. If you ask someone to think of a card, they almost always think of that. It's a very, very common one. And uh, we're left with, oh, that's interesting, the Ace of Clubs. These are kind of a matching pair here. So we, we randomly selected two aces. Let's see if we can't do something uh, with those. Uh, let's take the uh, uh, pack here. We're going to uh, place the uh, cards into the deck here at a couple of different spots that we'll have you uh, choose. What I'm going to do with the deck is I'm going to um, uh, uh, riffle off or, or kind of shuffle off a couple of small packets like this. And I just want you to tell me when to stop. You can tell me at any moment. Right there. Okay. We're going to take the Ace of Spades. We'll place the Ace of Spades face up inside of the deck and uh, we'll drop the rest of the pack on top of it and uh, we'll continue with the same kind of idea I'm just gonna slide off small packets please tell me any time that you wish when you would like me to uh, stop right there okay we'll take the uh, ace of clubs we'll place that into the deck face up drop the rest of the pack on there so we had the uh, two freely selected cards which are oddly very closely related uh, and then we place these two cards face up into freely selected points inside of a shuffled pack let's see what has been accomplished here in uh, in doing this if we look through and find your aces uh, we'll notice something very unusual here we have the ace of hearts has been located by the Ace of Clubs. If we continue to look through the deck, we'll notice also that the Ace of Diamonds has been located by the Ace of Spades. That's uh, very, very strange to uh, have located uh, all four of those Aces in there. So again, we have uh, all four of them. We have the uh, Ace of Spades, Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Clubs, uh, and Ace of Hearts. Let's uh, move on here. We're just going to take these cards, place them uh, kind of randomly uh, into the deck again, and uh, get the pack kind of shuffled up again where we were. Um, for a magician, a deck of playing cards is really no different than a puzzle. Uh, so some people are good at puzzles. Some people uh, that don't understand puzzles are not so good at them. The key to understanding a puzzle is to know its construction, to know its layout. If you understand the layout, it's much more easy to put it together. For a magician, a deck of cards is very similar. We understand the layout. We understand the construction and the order. Uh, so it's very easy, for example, for me uh, to do something like this, where I can cut into the deck and then locate uh, the Ace of Clubs. Uh, again, for someone uh, like a magician, it's easy uh, to do something like this where we take the bottom and we place it on the top and the top and place it on the bottom and then somehow randomly cut into uh, the Ace of Diamonds. Uh, for a magician, uh, it's very easy to uh, shuffle into the pack, uh, you know, something like this. Uh, in such a way that we really mix up the cards, uh, but because uh, I understand the construction and the layout of this particular puzzle, it's very easy for me to do something like this, where I can locate uh, the final two aces all together at the same time. Um, now, I said that uh, if you understand the construction and layout of a puzzle, it makes it very easy to then assemble it. Uh, now, let's say that we take a person's puzzle, someone who's good at puzzles, 
and uh, we alter the pieces in some way. Let's say we uh, uh, rip off a portion of a piece so that it really can't get put back together right. Or even better, if we take a number of those pieces and we turn them upside down, it makes the puzzle that much more confusing. Uh, we can try something like that. If we take, uh, for example, if we take the cards, we're just going to mix the cards up really in a, a random, crazy way here. So some cards uh, in this pack are, are face up, some cards are face down. It's really quite a mess. Uh, and then if we take our, our aces and we place them into the deck, we'll just kind of uh, uh, do the random thing again. We'll place some cards face up. We'll place uh, some of these cards uh, face down inside the deck like this. And uh, we're left with a very unusual situation here. You can see that we have uh, cards facing in all kinds of directions. Some of them are facing up. Some of them are facing down. Some are face to face. Uh, some of the cards are back to back, like right here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the deck, and if we give it one quick riffle shuffle like that, you can see something unusual has happened, something very strange. If we look through the deck, you'll notice that everything has been made right. And not only that, but we're left, as we were in the beginning, with all four of our aces from a completely shuffled borrowed deck. So this is an explanation or a tutorial for the uh, four ace uh, card routine. And of course you could use any four cards for this. There's a few things that are gonna happen. Three particular tricks, uh, or rather three particular effects that are being presented in this routine. Uh, however, there's more than three actual uh, tricks. What we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a, a force that otherwise would be used to um, a force a card that might otherwise be predicted uh, in order to set up the initial trick. So the fact that a couple of cards are being forced at the beginning shouldn't be made particularly aware to the spectator that uh, that is what has occurred. Um, so the three tricks are essentially one called uh, twins, which is a trick that I learned from uh, a fellow by the name of Andrew Murray. He created a, uh, a series of 13 uh, effects uh, that I believe the video was called 13. I saw this a number of years ago that uh, covered 13 card uh, effects uh, or routines that use very simple preparation or slights that, that uh, are easily accessible. So we're going to look at twins. That's the first uh, effect. The second effect is a uh, typical four card location. And there's a few utility moves in order to do that. Uh, we're going to kind of cover a few things that we've talked about on a previous video. And then uh, the last thing is something called a sloppy triumph. So um, the uh, move associated with that is called a sloppy shuffle. It's a very well-known shuffle, even by lay people. Uh, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. And it, with a certain kind of presentation, you can make it look a little bit more authentic than uh, uh, what you may be uh, familiar with if you've already seen this kind of shuffle before. So um, again, the idea here is that we're using simple slights, things that are a little bit easier to access, uh, that take uh, not so much uh, practice in order to get to mastery, uh, and not so much practice in order to maintain. So uh, that's the goal of this channel, is to uh, learn some more powerful card magic for people like me, who uh, have other things in their life going on and uh, don't devote hours and hours and hours and hours a day uh, to card magic, but just a little bit of uh, a time here and there and uh, perform uh, fairly infrequently. So calling is just getting cards somehow. Now, there's lots of ways to call cards. The Hobson's or spread call is probably the most direct one. It's done in the action of showing the face of the cards uh, together by spreading them and then stealing uh, the card underneath um, by pulling it outside of the spread and then separating it out from the pack. So right here I can call out two sevens uh, in the action of spreading through the deck. Now maybe you are not um, accustomed to this or haven't practiced that enough, but you still want to be able to do the other more simple parts of the routine. Very easy. What we're going to do is you cannot do the Hofsons or spread uh, to acquire your aces and then do the force uh, that we're going to look at here. Uh, like this, so I'm, I'm pulling out my aces. Instead, you can just ignore that force part entirely and just go directly to um, uh, identifying uh, the cards that you want. 
So let's say instead of forcing the first two aces, just say we're going to take a, a couple of cards here, a couple of aces from a, uh, a shuffled pack, and then what you do is you can at least get your other two aces put together. Now here you can see that they are uh, right next to each other. Let's assume that they're somewhere else in the deck. So I pulled out two cards to start with, and then what I can do is in the action of spreading through my cards, I can just kind of sloppily... Um, uh, spread through and then what I do is at the very end I can just set my packet on the end on the bottom so I've, I've called two aces one to the top and one to the bottom I'm actually set up for the next part of, of this effect twin so you can see that I can ignore uh, you know certain kinds of culling by putting in more sloppy culling another way to do uh, a card culling is to uh, do a, a table kind of a mess shuffle where you put everything out there and then in the action of uh, uh, spreading the cards, and this is a really good shuffle, is I can just acquire the things that I want. So I've got two aces out of the pack already set here on the top and uh, as I put all the uh, cards together I can retain those uh, uh, two aces there where I want them to be. Uh, and now I've got two of them set aside to do my effect and then later on, uh, when I want to acquire my other aces rather than do the force, I can say, we're going to use a couple of cards here. We're going to use uh, the ace of clubs and, and, of course, the ace of diamonds. And see, now I'm set to uh, uh, go on with my trick. I've got my uh, other cards where I want them to be. You, you understand what I'm saying. So there's other ways to get there. You don't have to uh, use the most complicated calling method. And as I mentioned on a previous video, the slapperier you are, uh, not ridiculous, you know, like Leonard Green sloppy, but the, the more, you know, I informal you are, the better off your magic can look. Because it doesn't look like you can do anything. You know, it looks like uh, the, the miracles that you're performing, uh, the, the little mysteries that you're pulling out are, are more, more or less uh, unexpected. So anyway, um, if you're going to follow my routine, the first thing you need to do is we're going to call using the Hobson's or Spread Call. So you show the deck, it might be broad, you say it's a completely uh, normal deck. You can see that all of the cards are out of sequence. Uh, also, it's a 52-pack uh, of cards, so there's only uh, 52 cards in here. Uh, that's the face cards and number cards, and there are no jokers. Now, in that process, what I've done in showing it is I've pulled apart my four aces uh, to get started. The second thing that you're going to do is we need to do a two card force. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to be able to force two cards. Now there is a, a force called a riffle force and uh, this force is very very simple. Uh, if you want to follow that up with a false shuffle you can. We're going to do a top retention false shuffle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom part of the deck. I've got my four aces on the top. I'm going to give myself an in jog. And you can see in my video it's a pretty big in jog. It doesn't matter. Again, if I'm really sloppy with the way I follow up, uh, that big in jog isn't going to be very noticed. Now what you've done is you've in jogged the first card, so I've retained a break uh, on top of my aces. And all I need to do is when I pick up the deck to continue, I'm going to push up on my in jog card so I maintain a thumb break above my uh, four aces and then I shuffle off again until I get back to my top. So I've shuffled the deck but I've also retained my cards. Uh, so at this point you can do a force, a riffle force. Now this is a really well known, really simple force. A lot of people know it. It doesn't matter that a lot of people uh, know it. I saw uh, a young fellow by the name of Kyle Eschen. He is uh, in his uh, 20s. He was well known uh, when he was a teenager over at the Magic Castle. He was a regular performer and was a young magician of the year, I think, in, in one of their uh, competitions over there, young performer of the year. He has a great routine, but really everything that he does is pretty simple. He did this on Penn and Teller uh, recently, I saw, and uh, he, did, he did this force, and the entire effect that he performed relied on this one thing. So you can't tell me that it's too simple uh, to do. Uh, this is called a riffle force. The idea is, is that you need to first cut off, usually I cut about a third or a quarter of the deck, and then you're going to replace the rest of the deck on top, maintaining a pinky break in the back. So um, uh, unaware to the spectator, you uh, break uh, the deck like that, and uh, you then uh, pr go on with a riffle. You say, please tell me when to stop, and as you riffle down, it doesn't matter where they tell you to stop. What you're going to do is you're just going to pick up 
where you have your break. So I've got about a quarter of the deck left to go here, but I'm just going to lift up at my break and I'm going to give him that card. It's that simple. That's that's a riffle for us. So then I replace. I do it again maybe with somebody else and we riffle down. They say stop. Sometimes it's good to say I can go further if you want. Uh, it gives the illusion that they have some choice in the matter when really they don't. I'm just going to break again at the top. I want to place my bottom uh, set back on top because I'm going to need my other two aces in a moment. I have forced now the first two aces of the trick. Okay, This is not the trick in of itself. I don't want to project that uh, this was done intentionally in any way. Uh, they'll probably deduce that later on. But I just want to turn them over and say, well, the first ace that you have is, uh, or the first card that we uh, selected is the ace of diamonds. And Oh, interesting enough, we have another ace here. Let's see if we can do something with those. So it seems random, even though that this is really completely intentional. Of course, you could do this with any four cards. So it could be jacks or queens if you want. Um, now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to perform a trick called twins. And uh, we, remember our, our situation here is we have two aces on the top. We need to get this into a place where one of them is on the bottom and one of them is on the top. And this is a self-working trick. So uh, here's where I'm at. I need to get it uh, so that one is on the bottom, one is on the top. As uh, I'm discussing these uh, cards here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of my uh, overhand uh, top retention shuffles. So again, I put my thumb break on there. This is a very good move to know. Um, and uh, I've retained the top. And then at the very end when I'm done, I'm going to peel off uh, slide off one ace and I'm just going to put it in the bottom. That's the last move I'm going to do. So I have now put myself in the situation that I need to be in. Uh, it also looks like I've messed the deck up too. I've shuffled the deck, which is going to be even more impactful for what's to come. Now, what I'm going to say is I'm going to take off small packets uh, from the top doing uh, a kind of one of these uh, um, uh, Hindu shuffles here. But I'm going to actually put my finger, make contact with the top of the first card, and I'm just going to slide that one card off alone. So I have an ace here in my hand. And then after that, I'm going to take, honestly, uh, small packets until they tell me to stop. And then we're going to place the card in face up. So here's my situation. I've got my top card is now in the bottom and their card is placed in. Then when I place the deck on top of that, uh, I've actually aligned my ace with another ace. Then I'm going to continue along, uh, and then we're going to place their card, the second card in face up, and you see because I peeled off that first card and put it on the bottom, I'm now set up to uh, put it all together. So it's a completely self-working trick. It's very, very powerful because it looks like there's a lot of random selection in there and a lot of uh, kind of shuffling going on. Uh, then uh, what I do is I show the cards uh, to have located the additional aces. And then I can move on with the next portion of the effect. Now, another way to do this, the way that I learned the trick, uh, is to, instead of doing the Hindu shuffle, you can actually have them deal off cards into uh, the spectator's hand. You can say, tell me when to stop. And you can see going one card at a time, I'm essentially accomplishing the same thing. So uh, you can just you know, put that together. Um, if you're doing it all in the hands, you can do the Hindu shuffle uh, method here. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to do a substitution of some of these cards so that we can make it appear that we are uh, uh, putting them back into the deck in a random order. So uh, in, in the revelation that we have found all four aces, we place them on the top, give, top, give a spread, and I'm going to spread an additional three cards uh, underneath these aces. And then in the process of bringing them back together, I'm going to catch a pinky break underneath those three additional cards. I square up the pack. Um, I can't recall the original name of this utility move. Uh, I know it as a turnover substitution, but someone, if you know the actual name for this, you can put it in the comments. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up all four aces and give a good cover on the front. And uh, nice and slow, we're going to slide off one ace at a time and then turn it over. And we're going to do this until we get to the fourth ace. And we actually have three cards underneath. Now, this there's a little bit of an angle issue here because this is a thick packet. You need to move somewhat fluidly and briskly, but you don't have to move too fast to do this. Just make sure you're giving adequate cover and trying to be somewhat smooth about it. We get to the bottom uh, uh, three cards plus that last ace and we just we just uh, place it on top like that. Then we're going to turn over the ace on top. So here's the situation. We have an ace and three random cards and then three aces. 
At this point, I'm going to give a, a fan, and I'm going to take the first ace, and I don't think I did it on the performance, but one subtlety is to just kind of show it as you bring it out, and then place it. Um, we're going to kind of make it appear like we're placing it into the pack, but we're really just going to place it on the bottom, but sticking outward like this, kind of as if it's in the middle. Okay, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. We're just going to place it right there. Then we're going to take the next random card. Be careful that you don't show that one. And we're going to place it into a random spot. And then we're going to take the next one and the next one. So we have an ace on the bottom and then three random cards substituting. We're going to close up the fans, square it all up. Now my situation is that I have three aces on the top. I've got one ace on the bottom. I'm set up now for my four card location. So I give my spiel about uh, a puzzles and a magician treats a deck like puzzles, yada yada. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a false cut. So the false cut that I'm going to do uh, is, let me pull these aces out for a second just so you can see what, what the real thing looks like. Uh, the real false cut we're going to emulate looks like this, where you're just peeling off uh, portions with the forefinger and then moving them over to the left hand. So you want to kind of practice this move a little bit so you can get used to that because we're going to falsify this a little bit here in a, sec in a second. It's going to be uh, very similar to kind of a four card Elmsley count in that we're going to take back a packet and then replace it on the top. And we're going to keep the deck fully in its order. What we're going to do is we're going to take the top packet again with three aces on the top, one ace on the bottom. I'm going to take about a third of the pack I'm going to slide it over to my hand. Then I'm going to take the next third and slide it over. But what I'm going to do is when, I, when I bring this over is I'm going to actually pick up the bottom. Okay? And I'm going to take the bottom, or rather now the middle pack. So I've taken the uh, top pack back. Then I'm going to place the next pack on top of that, which is really the middle. And then I'm going to replace... Uh, the top pack. So really slow, this is what it looks like. You might want to kind of go frame by frame to see this happening. Uh, we're going to take the top third, put it in. We're going to lift up the next third. I'm going to pick up the bottom, put in the middle, place in the next pack, and then the bottom. Okay, so uh, real slow without talking. Looks like that. Okay, at speed uh, it looks like that. Okay, uh, it doesn't look too flashy. It just looks like you know a little bit like what you're doing, but it looks like a, a fairly random cut, okay? But really, I've kept the deck in complete order. At this point, I can show one ace, okay? The next move is one that I taught on a previous uh, uh, tutorial and explanation. It's going to be one that looks like a false triple cut. What we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom uh, uh, third off, then we're going to bring it to the top, cross it. We're going to pick up the top third, and then we're going to replace the bottom third again. And then we're going to replace the top third. So we've actually done nothing. It just looks, uh, because of the confusion of it, it looks like we're uh, switching around the top and the bottom. And you can say out loud, what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom, we're going to put it on the top, we're going to put the top and put it on the bottom. So you're saying something that isn't really true. Uh, but it, it's, it's probably more accepted because you're saying it. Okay, so again, this is what it looks like slowly. Take the bottom third off, cross it, pick up the top third, put the bottom third back on the bottom, put the top third back on top. Okay, at this point, I can show my next ace. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do one last false shuffle. We're going to start the same way that we did our first overhand false shuffle. We're going to put a big in jog on there. We're going to shuffle off. But now when we get to the bottom small packet where we have a remaining ace, I'm going to out jog that packet way out here. Okay. Now when I pick it up, I'm going to pick up all of the deck except for this top packet. My finger is going to make contact here. I'm going to grab my in jog card, put a big thumb break, and I'm going to leave behind the top packet, which is really the bottom of the deck. Then I'm going to shuffle off on top of that, the rest of the packet, until I get to my... Uh, uh, break at the top, and then I'm going to throw the top back on, which is really the top retention. So I've retained the bottom packet and the top packet in all of that. And then what I can do is very simple. I can just hold the deck, uh, not firmly, not too tight, but just loosely enough that I have contact with the top and bottom card. I slide out the rest of the deck, and then I'm left with the top and bottom card, which are the final aces. So that's my uh, uh, ace location as the second part of my three-part uh, routine here. A sloppy shuffle works like this. We take a few cards off, we turn over those cards, pick off a few more cards. Now as I go on with this uh, back and forth, up and down, all I'm doing is I'm splitting the pack into two parts. 
one part is going to be face up on this side and one part's going to be face down on that side. Okay, so this is all a sloppy shuffle is. It looks, and if you say that this is what you're doing, we're just going to mix the cards up so some are face up, some are face down. Um, you know, the audience is more likely to believe it. You don't want to do this very long and very slowly. You want to get kind of brisk at this because anyone looking at it can sort of sort this out. We're going to add one extra move here at the end, though. I'm going to take the last few cards, and I'm actually going to place them the wrong direction right on top. You want it so that you can see some of these cards sticking out. Because right now, given what I just did, I have a breakup. I have some face down cards. I've got face up cards, and I can see a couple of face down cards. You can probably give a quick turnover, and you can see the same kind of situation. I've got face up cards. I can see some face down and face up. So it looks like there is... Um, what I say I have done. It gives a little bit of a convincer here. So uh, very quickly do that turn over one time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my four aces in. All I need to do is place them in to the appropriate side in the wrong direction. So I have a top side that is face up. I have a bottom side that's face down. I'm going to place my ace uh, face down in the top packet uh, like this. Then I'm going to take a face up ace and I'm going to place it in the bottom pack. You want to make sure you're really close kind of to the bottom too because we're going to have to do a cut by feel in the center um, in a moment here. We don't want to mess it up uh, by having those aces too close to the center. So I place that next ace in. Then uh, I can maybe place another ace face up. The order doesn't really matter here. Maybe separate that out. And then we're going to do one more face down ace up here at the top. Uh, find a spot to put it in there. Now I'm really in a good spot. If I do my turnover again because I've added my aces, this really looks like it is what I say it is because I've added additional cards in there that are uh, in, in place facing the wrong direction. So do another uh, turnover like that. You can explain we have really a big mess here. Some cards are face up and some cards are face down. You can uh, uh, take off the top a few cards, show them, and then place them on the bottom of the deck. I didn't turn them around. I just placed them in a different part. Then I can lift up and show. Now, i got to be careful. I picked up uh, at a place where I'm actually showing my ace. So you want to show that they're face-to-face -face and back-to-back. -back. But it's very important that the last time you do this, that you go to the center of the deck. Okay, and it's going to be very uh, even when you're doing your sloppy shuffle, so that you really do have a center here. Uh, go to the center of the deck, and as long as you place your aces far enough away from the center, you should be safe here. Go to the center of the deck, lift up at the portion. It should be easy to find where they are back to back. You say some are face to face, some are back to back. This move exists in almost every version of Triumph, even uh, Costier Kimlet's version uh, where he does his big call. Uh, this is the last thing that you do. You show back-to-back, -back, face to face and then when you bring them back together, you actually write the two packs so they're facing the same direction. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a riffle shuffle, a true authentic one, and that's just going to put our aces more closely together. Right now, they're fairly spread apart in the packs. Two are close to the top, two are close to the bottom. So by taking the deck and uh, um, riffling down halfway and doing this uh, shuffle. I'll bring them a little bit closer together. Now, you want to be a little angle sensitive. Uh, when you do this, you don't want them to see the faces too easily. Just peel off in such a way that they don't see kind of uh, facing them. Uh, do an in inside corner quick riffle shuffle. Uh, bring them together, do the finish, and then you're ready to present. Uh, the, the final conclusion. So we fan through, we show that in that motion all of the cards are now right, and I'm left with uh, aces facing uh, in the direction uh, that they are intended, facing up while all the other cards are face down, and uh, that's the conclusion of this uh, four ace or four card routine. Uh, so uh, very simple slights. Everything in here is highly manageable. The only thing you may have a little bit of trouble with is uh, getting that Hofsenzer call down. But again, you can either start by freely selecting the cards for the spectator uh, and ignore that force at the beginning entirely, uh, or you can use some other methodology to call those cards out. Uh, the other uh, final uh, idea is to, if this is going to be a routine, you do a routine like this, just have the aces already on the top. 
in, inside of your, your deck. So it's not a borrowed deck, but you can show that everything is uh, shuffled, and then you can actually go right into your routine. So have it uh, a slightly prepared if you're not going to do it from a shuffled pack. So there it is, a simple four ace routine, simple slights. Uh, take your time in the presentation with this. Make sure you have your dialogue worked out. Uh, move fluidly, move smoothly, but don't go too quick. Uh, just take your time with the slights. Be intentional about everything you do. And uh, these uh, are pretty hard-hitting uh, slights, even though they, they might be well-known to most magicians. Uh, the lay person uh, will be uh, completely burned by this. So good luck with this. Hopefully you have fun with that.